Okay, this is Mike Benoit with Tyranny Busters, and today we're interviewing Mike McGinty, and uh, Mike's going to introduce himself, tell us how infamous he is. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, infamous would be the, the correct term, I, I suppose. Uh, not famous, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm an anarchist and a uh, li longtime libertarian, uh, I suppose, uh, recently uh, uh, admitted anarchist, and uh, I've uh, professionally been teaching critical thinking for the last 20 years. Uh, teaching at uh, all sorts of different companies from pharmaceuticals to banking, insurance, finance, you name it, uh, all over the world. And um, it's been, uh, it's been a, quite a pleasure for me to, to do that. And then uh, in, my, in my spare time, I do quite a bit of community service work uh, with Mankind Group, uh, Mankind Project. And um, I'm excited to be here. Sounds good. All right, Mike, this is going to be freewheeling. I didn't write down any questions or uh, any place to go. I just thought, well, I'll... So unprepared, Michael. You know what I mean? I thought, oh, unbelievable. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Oh, okay. We'll go wherever it goes. So, yeah. first off, in, in a couple of minutes or less, tell us uh, what uh, an anarchist society would mean to you. Uh, well, I, I suppose you know one of the most popular misconceptions of anarchy is chaos. Um, it's it's used as, as a synonym for disorder and uh, and chaos, and uh, that's not what true anarchy is at all. Anarchy is simply absence of government. Um, uh, and uh, I believe that, that um, it's possible, uh, not only possible, but probable that we can have, and because we, in fact, we do have a civilization that is not predicated upon the uh, threat of violence to uh, make people behave uh, rationally and morally and ethically. So uh, it's another word for, for anarchist uh, these days is voluntarist, which um, might more accurately describe the type of uh, society that, that we're advocating, uh, meaning that everyone in the society is uh, there by their own choice, and they are volunteering their uh, time, energy, and, and uh, uh, good behavior um, to cooperate with others and, and make things work. So uh, that's that's the essence of it. Yeah. All right, great. Well, basically, that's what society is all about. And you mentioned, uh, or should be all about, and uh, you mentioned a, a system or without any government. Have you read Albert J. Knox's book, uh, Our Enemy of the State? No, I have not. Okay, I recommend it to all anarchists and those uh, of pe those people like myself who believe in minimal government. Albert J. Knox was uh, a uh, anarchist, and I think he wrote the book in 1945. He, uh, throughout the book, just a few minutes ago, I went online and looked through the book, and I searched the word government and it's loaded in there that the term government uh, too often people refer to the state and government as the same thing and he covers that ground now okay. I'm all I'm always arguing with anarchists that government is a natural occurring thing it happens in your family your church group or uh, the, where you work it's a natural occurring thing and, and what anarchists really have offense uh, uh, with is the violation of their rights uh, yes, thank you. Not. That's a, that's a good point, and I would I would wholeheartedly agree with you. I mean, it, join any any club or any group, and uh, you'll quickly start to establish uh, protocols and procedures and policies uh, that grow so thick that you know it starts the, the number of uh, things to adhere to it starts to outnumber the number of members. Um, so I, I think you're right the, that government government uh, and uh, does naturally occur, uh, but I think that's unfortunate too, um, in many ways. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, you know, you and I are having this conversation. Uh, our communication is governing one another. I'll say something and you react to it and you say something, I react to that. So it's, it's just happening everywhere you go. But when, what we all agree to, and then the anarchists want to come out with this principle, not aggression principle, they call it. And they come out with it as an absolute, um, that one should not uh, transgress on another. Sure. And I, and, and I am of the content, uh, contention that we're all doing that to some degree or another. It's when it becomes unwanted or we know it's unwanted. Uh, for example, if you're going to get the pretty girl, you're not going to just sit there in the chair and be passive. You're going to be aggressive. Right. And, and so she slaps your face, in which case you know that you're trespassing. There you go. Right. So, I got it. I got you. Know, you don't need any sign for that. So, um, and, and then the, the concept that you covered uh, when we were, weren't on air you, about the association 
you want to go into that? Yeah. yeah, want to go into that a little bit? Uh, sure. Uh, and let me just say, uh, uh, I think uh, Walter, uh, what was it, the, the radio personality, the uh, black gentleman from uh, 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 Walter uh, Walter Williams? Yeah, he he said he said uh, he did a speech saying that he's a big fan of seduction. Um, that that would be his term for what you're describing there in terms of. Uh, uh, trying to influence someone, we're all influencing each other. I would agree with that. And and uh, so the moment that it becomes a trespass and is unwanted, then of course that's where uh, that's where uh, anarchists would take ex exception. Um, so yeah, before we started, I was describing that, that uh, the gated community, in my view, uh, the modern day gated community is in many ways a microcosm of a of an, a functional anarchist society, in that uh, you have property owners who have volunteered. To be there, they've agreed to abide by the contract that they signed for their HOA, and when they move in there, they have, you know, those they, they know what to expect. Uh, but these gated communities not only have 24-hour uh, uh, security, they oftentimes will have also uh, jungle gyms and swimming pools and and even daycare for the kids. And now, what they're starting to do is have um, uh, an um, an ombudsman or a, uh, a a resident judge, if you will, and court system. So they're able to adjudicate disputes between different property owners, um, you know, from simple things like uh, your tree fell in my yard to uh, theft and, uh, you know, on up. And basically the parties agree to uh, abide by whatever outcome uh, would come of that court. Uh, and if they can't, then, of course, they would escalate it to the, the level of the, the county or state or, or even federal level. Um, so that, that, in my view, is a working model of... Uh, sort of a of an anarchist society even though of course you do have the the, the state outside um uh you know keeping keeping the uh the boundaries uh fair i suppose right yeah I, i'd like to comment on that i think that uh, i would call that a working example of government without force uh and by agreement and yeah, so uh, yeah in that certainly in, in that uh we basically you'd have to get the uh, cooperation of the local police to stay out of it uh, long enough to allow for these, you know, uh, adjudications to take place, right? Um, and that's that's something that they're not necessarily want to do. <laughs> so in that society, in that situation, uh, let's say some um, kid of a, a homeowner uh, inherits the property from his parents, and he says, "You know these rules you guys got? I never agreed to these rules." Uh, now, right now, what I'm giving you is the example of the anarchist who's born into a system. The light, the Lysander Spooner, uh, uh, you know, contract of no, uh, constitution of new authority sort of thing. Like I didn't sign it, so I don't have to abide by it, right? Right, and yeah. uh, so, and, that, and that's the the same dilemma you would have in your condominium uh, anarchy uh, association. I think that that's a valid point, though. Uh, what, what do you what do you think, Mike? Uh, what you what I'm saying, I think, it's valid, I think it's a valid argument to say, "Hey, I didn't sign it, and I, I don't want to live by it." Um, but to my mind, then of course they would say, "Okay, well then go live somewhere else." Um, yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, so that might be a valid point, uh, and nobody, you know, try to get a hundred percent agreement on anything. But uh, I went through Lysander's, Lysander Spooner's uh, Constitution of No Authority, and I intersp intersperse my comments and. So when he's in his document there, he was acting like the Constitution was some sort of authority over the people, and of course, as we never signed it, and you and I, it was basically a grant from the people to elected officials that you could do this much. So our only our only peeve on the thing, I mean, we shouldn't have a peeve about we have a right to keep and bear arms. You know, say. Well, I don't have to abide by that constitution. I didn't sign it. There's there's the stuff that applies to us basically is rights. The limitations apply to the officials of government. Yes, thank you. And and I, I agree with you. I think that's that that's a common misconception. I, I, I even get really uh I'm very particular even with terms when I when I hear uh you know, when I watch YouTube videos and I hear a police officer say, Well, I you know, I've got the right to do this and I've got the right to do that, and I'm thinking you don't have rights. You have authorities. I have rights. I'm the citizen. You're the authority figure. So I'm I'm very sensitive to that sort of thing. And I and and I agree with you. I think many people get you know they look at the Constitution through the the, the wrong end of the telescope. You know, <laughs> the things look really small. 
uh, in, in terms of your number of rights, that's because you're looking at it the wrong way. The, the purpose of the, the Constitution is to limit the powers that are granted to the government. And uh, and if you look at the, the Bill of Rights, you know, 1 through 10, uh, 9, and, 9 and 10 essentially say the same thing, which is, hey, man, this is by no means meant to be an exhaustive list of all the rights you have. You get the right to wear a purple hat and walk down the street backwards if you want to. Uh, but we don't have time to write all that stuff down here. So um, all right. That's, uh, and that, I think, is an important perspective to, to keep in mind um, because it's the first time ever that that's happened in the history of mankind uh, to, to limit the, the, the number of fingers that can go in the pie. And, uh, you know, and as a consequence, I think it, we've, we've become one of the richest and most uh, prosperous nations on the face of the planet for that reason. Right. Uh, those, those things that have uh, uh, secured our, our rights, if you will, now those things that violate our rights are... Are, are undermining that and destroying it. And there's certainly plenty of those things. Now, I had a discussion with um, an anarchist recently on YouTube channel uh, or on a forum back and forth. And I tried to point out to him that the people that are arguing against government are doing the same thing the gun grabbers are doing. They're painting this big, broad brush that guns are bad, guns kill people, and, and I, I told them that government doesn't do anything. The actors in government that do it, that, that commit the violations uh, upon us. Well, it's the actors. Okay. And whether or not, and they, they, have, they feel they're, they're sanctioned by their action, and people in general say, well, you know, it's the law, so we got to obey it. If we don't like it, we change it. So it's all this sanctioning of these bad acts by these actors they are using the tool government that we really have a fence. Well, uh, you know, I, you're right in that, you know, ultimately every action has to be taken by a human being. So uh, there, there's certainly that. But, you know, in, in a way, you're reminding me of, of, of uh, the uh, sort of socialist and communist apologist who would say, well, you know, it's a workable system if we just had the right people doing it. You know, <laughs> right? I mean, we've all heard, we've heard that argument so many times. And... Um, Oh, see, see, that's not what I'm saying. See, I'm saying it's a tool, and it's going to be misused. I'm not saying, saying it's a tool, and it's going to be misused. I would agree with that. Okay, but so what, tell me what I'm missing then. And what you're missing is that uh, it's not going to produce any. You know, the the accusation that typically people like me get from anarchists is that I'm searching for the utopia. I'm thinking this is utopia, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. We're not going to have a utopia until men are angels. But no, of course uh, not. Yeah, so it's a tool, just like a gun's a tool. You know, we could say that we're going to outlaw drugs because drugs kill. We're going to outlaw guns because gun kills. We're going to outlaw government because government kills. Right. But it's a tool. So it's the individual actors that do the damage or they do the right thing. And, and so once in a while you see a cop video on Facebook where they're showing the, the cop is uh, standing up for somebody's rights, you know? Yeah, that, so, that's true. That's, that's a good point. I mean, they're, you know. I think, and I think that we should be uh, more vigilant, you know, as a society, in holding accountable uh, those who are creating new tools uh, and levers of power uh, out of th thin air. I mean, look at the a number of executive orders that were issued by uh, George W. Bush, uh, you know, eclipsed only by uh, Obama. I mean, you know, even though he came in promising not to do it, um, and uh, you know, to my my liberal friends who say, well. Oh, Michael, you know, I say, well, look, don't don't you worry about the N NDAA, uh, National Defense Authorization Act, which allows the uh, the president, anyone in the executive branch, to indefinitely lock someone up at Gitmo uh, just by branding them a terrorist, just by calling them a terrorist. No, uh, you know, habeas corpus, no lawyer, just off you go. Um, I said, don't doesn't that worry you that? And you say, oh, you know, my friend said, Michael, he'll never use it. I said, I, he probably won't, but uh, what about, you know, did you trust John Ashcroft? <laughs> oh, no, I hated him. Well, okay, well, well, he could be the next son of a bitch that's, you know, in power, you know, after Obama or whoever, and you're not going to like them very much, you know. Would you trust them uh, to uh, keep you company in a, in a, in a uh, locked room with no windows? I, I wouldn't. Um, yes. You know, so, now you're coming down the road there that explains why we get in trouble with, you know, a plethora of laws, perversions of laws. They're not really laws; they're perversions. And you got the right, you know, because the law. If you if you've read Bossiat, the Bossiat, of course, yeah. He 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 specifies that the the whole thing 
uh, the underpinning of law is it has to go to the heart of securing our rights um, of life, liberty, and property. If it does anything else, if it violates our right of life, liberty, and property, it's actually a perversion. Yes, it's a perversion, and it's completely invalid on, on its face. And in fact, m m most of the Supreme Court rulings have, have upheld that same uh, uh, understanding, um, yeah. uh, so, which, is, which is positive. Um, but um, now here's another place to get in trouble, and I think I would hope uh, I'm sure anarchists would agree let me, on. Let me add one thing. You know, I, I've been a, uh, I, I read this quote uh, from Moses, the movie, where I guess he said, "No man can break the law; he can only break himself against the law." And I've reflected on that quite a bit. You know, the law of gravity, the law of uh, you know, you get old, you die, that kind of thing. I mean, <laughs> those, those are laws, okay? And then there's just legislation which is uh, many times just a bastardization of some, you know, thought balloon that some politician came up with. And uh, it's just adding complexity to, to our civilization and not really solving anything. I mean, how many, how many more crime bills do we need? How many more uh, Megan's laws or whatever? I mean, you know, assaulting people and kidnapping them and raping them and killing them, that's already illegal, man. It's, you're not going to make it go away with another stroke of another pen and a new bill. So, um, Right. I think outlaw, yeah. outlaw knives or outlaw baseball bats or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which really violates uh, violates people's rights. You yeah. Know, I'm, I'm sorry. So, so, so I, I do want to kind of touch on upon the point that you just made about about uh, it's the people in government and not the not the. Uh, okay, thank you. Um. Uh. Yeah. So, you, you're right. I mean. Uh, I guess I guess it is similar in terms of a knee-jerk reaction to say, oh well, you know, government murdered 300 million people uh, uh, in the last century, uh, so government's bad. That's basically that is true. That's where I'm coming from. Um, I think that the number one killer, the number one cause of death uh, for unnatural causes, is government, and uh, and so we need to be wary of that. So I, I think that in terms of being eternally vigilant, um, and this goes back to the Jeffersonian ideal, uh, his. He actually was something of a Lysander Spooner uh, advocate in that he said, "I think that we should have a new constitution every 20 years. Every every generation should have uh, should write their own uh, based upon oh, yeah, their values and what's important to them." He actually said a revolution every 20 years. Sorry. He actually said a revolution every 20 years. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Exactly, the tree of liberty, oh, right? Yeah. Um, but now go, let's go back to your point then, uh, because I'm trying to get you and and you, you being a critical thinker, it to see that you're doing the same thing the gun grabbers do. They say it's the gun that kills. And now you're saying it's government kills, not the actors in it, but government. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, exactly. So how, how can I pin, uh, you know, uh, uh, the act, the act, um, agent of action upon a, a concept? And that's not really, uh, it's disingenuous and it's not fair. Um, in the same way, I guess, uh, was it uh, Ludwig von Mises uh, when he wrote The Road to Serfdom? Uh, he saw the uh, he saw socialism as a as a prerequisite or a, a prelude to uh, genocide. Uh, even though he couldn't really he couldn't quite connect the dots, you know, he saw that he saw this um, the correlation certainly, you know, and, and, but he couldn't quite show causation uh, in terms of how specifically socialism leads to hey, let's kill all these people over here, um, but. Uh, I think he came as close as anyone else could. So, in you know, in that way, it is. I am playing a little fast and loose uh, by by pinning uh, you know the the my my scorn on uh, on that concept of government and not the people themselves. Uh, so, yeah, I guess the the only answer I really have for you is, like I said, we should we need to be more eternal uh, eternally vigilant. And whenever we see um, government agents, specific ones, stepping outside of their their boundaries of power and their limitations, we need to just I mean stop right down on that immediately. I mean, yeah, uh, Obama was, was in front of Congress about a year or two ago saying, hey, we're going to take our marching orders from, from NATO and the UN. And they're going, yay! I'm going, what are you thinking? I mean, you yeah. guys are the ones in charge of declaring war or not, you know, and now the executive is coming to you and saying we're going to take orders from someone else outside of us? This is crazy. Yeah, well, uh, and so, what you said, though, that, that thing about eternal vigilance, you can go back to our founding and original Congress, when Madison had to get up in front of the body and tell them they, they didn't have the right to spend uh, money on uh, some French refugees, 
uh, their constituency's money. It's not in the Constitution. And so really at the beginning, they start to cross the line. you got to fight it constantly. I mean, we have to fight the Washington and his whiskey tax. And so people have to resist the tyranny. There's no other way out of it. And tyranny is going to come up whenever somebody thinks they have power, a balance of power, and get a, can get away with something over somebody else. Uh, they're inclined to do that, and Bossia talks about that in the law too. Fatal tendency of mankind. Yeah, and it's easier to live at the uh, expense of someone else. People are going to do it. Now, the difference between government and, say, socialism, I agree, and then I think I might even be able to connect the dots for von Mises, is that socialism. Wow, all right, that's quite a claim. <laughs> socialism is a philosophy, and it's, it's not a bad philosophy when it's applied to the Quakers. And it's a community, and they all, you know, engage and exchange everything on a, a free will basis. But when it's done by the force, it, it's mandated. It's not a voluntary thing. It's mandated that uh, you know you got to produce, and we'll take your production, and we'll give it to whoever we want to give it to. Pretty soon, the producers are, uh, you know, become guys where they're on the dole. They can't produce anymore because you know uh, I hurt my back and da da. They did something, and they see that that's the way to go, live at the expense of somebody else, and pretty soon everybody moves into that side. Everybody gets on the wagon, and they say, okay, pull me now, and there's nobody pulling the wagon. Yeah, that's precisely what happened, actually, to the, the Puritans when they first came over here. They, they, the reason that they nearly uh, starved to death and died, uh, died out was because they were following, because they, they were all church-going, you know, God-fearing, uh, and, and very, you know, united uh uh, a culture uh, that uh, cared for one another and what have you, but they they nearly starved to death because uh, no one wanted to go out in, in the fields and, and work. It wasn't until it wasn't until they brought in uh, private property, uh, con the, that concept, and literally fenced off their farmland uh, from you know family to family, that uh, that's when they prospered. And that that was actually You're also missing, the birth of Thanksgiving. You're missing a key point there. Thank you. The key point you're missing is the uh, the Puritans. When they had that system, it was mandated. It wasn't voluntary. It was mandated by the people they put in authority. So they were they were said, "This is our system. There's no other choice. We produce. Everybody puts it in the warehouse." So you're saying they, they hemmed they hemmed it in uh, the, the, and, and set that paradigm in place. And you're saying, had they not mandated that, then that would not have happened. Have they not mandated mandated that, and people did by a voluntary um, basis? Uh, then it would be totally different because one would hold his brother accountable for it. In other words, you're not working and you're not going to, you shouldn't be able to eat here if you don't work and you don't do your share. But when everybody just goes, puts their things in the warehouse and nobody knows who put what in there and you go to get it out and there's not much in there. There's the commons. There's no, uh, yeah. Yeah. So there. Yeah, but, but see, see I, I, I'm of the opinion that I think that I see, uh, bon I see these, uh, self-organizing principles, you know, Adam Smith's uh, invisible hand, I see these things coming together without uh, necessarily having to have a mandate. Um, I think that, let, let's say they didn't have a mandate. Let's say you only had uh, 60, 30 percent, even 30 percent of the of the population uh, decides to abide by this rule. They're going to prosper uh, and everyone who doesn't is is going to is going to uh, continue, you know, living a very uh, threadbare existence. Right. So, um, you know that to me, to my mind, the, the the trouble with defending whether whether you're defending libertarianism or anarchy or uh, voluntarism uh, is you're having to defend this open space. It's kind of like you know, here, this is what I'm selling. Isn't it great? It's a blank canvas where something magical can happen in the future, and I don't know what it is, but um, I'm having to sell this against the Golden Gate Bridge, right? And that's what's so troublesome about about uh, you know trying to sell freedom is we're trying to we're trying to protect uh, opportunity for some future genius to make something happen where uh, where we don't want government to intrude and create something just to say oh hey look look at we built the Golden Gate Bridge and isn't it awesome and that wouldn't be there if it wasn't for government to come by and do this you know well who knows what would be there instead uh, we don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, and then cover that uh, ground in, in a little bit of a different twist. When I'm discussing things with anarchists, they say, no, you're, in, you're involved with government, so therefore 
you know, you're 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 evil, just like the gun is evil. You're you know, and I'm oh, saying that. I know I'm evil. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm saying to them, I'm saying, well look, do you think we should have driver's licenses? And they'll yeah. go, No. I said, Okay. Now, you know, I can convince people, like you said, that 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 slate, that clean slate there. I just talked to them and I say to them, I said, you know, do you have a right to travel? And they say, yeah, I have a right to travel. Sure. Then, then how come you have to get a driver's license to uh, travel? And they go, well, you know, make sure we're safe and whatnot. Then I go, well, does it make us safer? I, and they go, well. Yeah, how much training did they give you? How, yeah, how many people do you see on the road that you say, how do they get a license? You know, that's what you say to yourself. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, my daughter, the other day when she told me a little bit about her passing her driver's test, she passed a couple years ago. She said, uh, the instructor said that I did pretty good and that I'm going to get my license. I only made 14 mistakes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and so, and, and then. Oh, and it, what's worse is if you're a motorcycle rider and you take the written test, yeah. uh, I, I, I took the test and. I had to read between the lines and get the, the you know, I had to go by the spirit of, of what they were asking to figure out what they wanted me to answer. And I walked up to the lady and I said, you know, if anyone rode a motorcycle the way that they're suggesting here, they would die in a minute. She says, I know, I ride. There's no way you could, you could do this. I mean, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. So, yeah. So here I am saying driver's licenses are bad. Here are the anarchists are saying government is bad. All right. Okay. And over here are all these people. That think that government did something good, you know. Gave, government is good, okay. And, and so the anarchists so wrong. Think government's bad, which is out reality to these people. And the guys like me were saying, a driver's license is a wrong thing to do. It takes away your liberty, it takes away your right to travel without permission from the state. And then I can open that up to one license after another after that. And these people are going, yeah, I never thought of it that way. You're absolutely right. Right. And, and so I say to the anarchists, you know, you want this society that you're talking about someday. It's not going to be done by a few libertarians are saying driver's licenses are bad. Anarchists are saying government's bad. And the rest of the folks are saying government's good. What's wrong? Oh, with without a doubt. And, and thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Look, uh, see, now we're getting into uh, the concept of how how sellable is this and, and how uh, you know, will we ever have a, a victory for ourselves uh, as either a libertarian or minarchists or anarchist society? Um, you know, that that this I think is the central uh, issue and the central problem with you know with politics in general is that um, what, what was what was Franklin's fa favorite uh, famous one of his famous quotes after the uh, Constitutional Convention when uh, a woman said, "Tell us, Mr. Franklin, uh, what sort of government government have you created?" And he says, "A republic, madam, if you can keep it." And uh, and and he, he said uh, something like um, uh, uh, I forget. But anyway, it was something about how uh, how few types of government have been tried. And I think that that's very accurate. I think that that's uh, a very understated point, one that we don't address very much, but we need to, because when you look at this grand experiment in liberty that we're having here in the U.S., um, this is literally what the fifth or sixth uh, different incarnation of uh, of a government system um, among uh, an infinite number that haven't been experimented on. I mean, you got oligarchy, plutocracy, democracy, republic, uh, you know, some combination therein, and, and maybe a couple other, you know, hybrids, but uh, dictatorships, tyranny, what have you. I mean, so maybe, I don't know, a dozen in all, uh, when really they're essentially all this, the, you know, they have, they go by different names, but really have the same essence to them. I think that, that we've, greatly underserved ourselves as a, as a uh, uh, society, not just our society, the world society, I mean, in that we have not experimented with different systems of governance um, to any real uh, consequence, to any real uh, significant degree. Well, uh, I'll just refer you back to Bastiat on that, Mike, Frederick Bastiat, and it's like on the right to vote on, on suffrage. He said, it doesn't matter if you limit the right to vote to a very narrow few. As long as they could not pass any legislation that violates your right to life, liberty, and property. Yeah. And in that, 
hitchhiking onto what you just said, you could have a thousand different governmental systems if they had that one basis uh, of operation that we all have it, our individual right to preserve our life, liberty, and property, and that government could do nothing but to aid that, if you will, that right. And uh, it leads into another big distinction I'm having with constitutional limited government. People make the mistake that government's supposed to protect our life, liberty, and property. That's wrong. That opens up the door for all of these fallacious laws, these law, perverted laws. Wait, I, I, miss, I miss what you said. What, what, what's wrong? You, you said that government is supposed to protect our life, liberty, and property. It's not supposed to protect your life, liberty, and property. It's not. It's supposed to preserve your right or, or secure your right to preserve your life, liberty, and property yourself. Okay. If, yeah, I got you. I got you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so yeah, different, different. Uh, you know, placing the the, the accountability and the the uh, control uh, on the, the right side of the fence. Right. Because if they if their purpose was to protect your life, then they could say to you, Mike. Seatbelt laws, helmet laws, no more downhill skiing. Right. And, you know. I mean, it doesn't. Where does it stop? I mean, they've already they're taking table salt, you know, salt off the tables in New York, New York City, and getting rid of uh, soft drinks. I mean, it's it's insane that used to be an, an outrageous example that could never come true and now it's uh becoming commonplace so i picked this up when i said how are these people all getting this confused and then and i looked at the declaration of independence and i go this is where they're getting confused i looked at i said i want to check out jefferson's original draft and in this original draft the wording was different and the wording went right to that it went the government was to secure our right to preserve okay. our life, liberty and property. Beautiful. Instead of we have a do we have this inalienable right to life, liberty, and property, which means here I am, feed me, give me health care, give me free education. Yeah, you know? exactly. And 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 to exact and uh, to what I uh, alluded to earlier in terms of my my word copying people, I think that it's important that we that we be clear about these terms and and use them properly. Uh, the way that the, the term a right has been completely bastardized uh, recently, that you have a right to health care. How can you be born in, you know, I mean, you come into this world naked and screaming uh, and, 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 you know, uh, distracting and, uh, and not much for me has changed. But, uh, uh, you know, how can you imagine coming into this world and saying, you owe me, you know, pay, pay up, you owe me health, free health care? Well, who does? And for what, based upon what? A foundation. It's just an, a ridiculous idea. Now, you do have the right to breathe air. You do have the right to uh, to the fruit of your labor. You do have a right to uh, own property. You do have a right. These are natural. You know, I have the right to walk down the street if I want to, um, at, you know, uh, or drive a vehicle at whatever velocity I see fit. Um, uh, these are natural rights that uh, as long as I'm not trespassing on the rights of others, that's, the, that's uh, you know, and this is the foundation in uh, human uh, natural natural rights uh, is the foundation, of course, of, of uh, our society, and you know, dating back to what Locke and Montesquieu and, and those cats back in the Enlightenment. Um, and basically, the, concept, the concept is you you have a right to defend your life, liberty, and property. And yes. Government is supposed to secure that right. Exactly, and what, what's become bastardized about it is uh, we've got these little chinks in the armor where the Supreme Court will allow, uh, such as the. Uh, uh, interstate commerce clause, you know, the, the, uh, says the government has the right to regulate interstate commerce. Well, what kind of activities that include? Well, everything, <laughs> um, right. you know, and that, that little chink in the armor is it's like, you know, you, you can't put your finger in the, in the dike for that long before the whole thing just, I mean, everything just comes rushing through there. That and uh, what was the other uh, one that, that, that they use all the time? The um, uh, uh, interstate commerce, um, uh, there's, there's, there's another one that they use all the time as well. Oh, general welfare clause, right? Well, the, general, the general welfare of the people, you know, this and that. The, of course, they use that to justify welfare. <laughs> yeah, I think that, what's that 17th Amendment or something, too, that, uh, you know, rights of the, of the federal citizen um, and the state citizens have the same rights as the federal citizen. And those are basically privileges and not rights that they're talking about. But yes, thank you. Exactly. And, and again, to parse terms, you know, but this is, it's important, I think, to, to use the correct term. And, and uh, in the way that, that, we're, that we're really becoming mushy with the language uh, is, is telling, I think, in terms of why people are consi considering uh, healthcare a right. 
or um, uh, yeah. So th this, these are these are troublesome issues in my in my view. Well, yeah, and I think if we shoot down to the basic that Jefferson was talking about and Bastia was talking about, and that is you have a right to preserve your life, your liberty, and your property, and right. government is supposed to secure that. If it does something different than that, for example, government pulls you over, even for going, you go say you go five miles too fast, five miles an hour too fast, you really harm nobody, there's nobody put in danger, there's no crime, no victim, Yeah. and yet your, your life and your liberty is being infringed on, and then they take your property for doing this, all under the guise of bringing that's, security. That's right. Yeah, it's it's it's. I I we, I've been calling it safety Nazism for a long time. It's like the safety Nazis are out. You know, they they partner with the uh, lawyers to litigate everything away, and what they can't litigate away, uh, they'll just pass rules to you know for your own good. You know, for your own safety. Well, you know what? I'm advocating danger. You know, I I, I want to do something dangerous and stupid. Uh, where's that vote go? I mean, where do I? Can I can I can I? Uh, you know, cobble together a, a, a cabal of, of people who are interested in, in doing something, you know, uh, outlandish and, and ridiculous and possibly uh, uh, catch on fire. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, no one's going to stand behind that. But uh, it's 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 kind of a shame. I mean, you know, the popularity of, the, of this book, The Dangerous Book for Boys, um, was a, a, on the New York Times bestseller list for a while uh, because, you know, we're, 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 we're really losing something, I think, as our as a, a society, uh, the American culture is losing an element of that, uh, you know, devil may care, uh, uh, um, self self sufficiency and and uh, self trust that uh, that was a, a hallmark of the American character, um, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, individualism. You know, another way I explain that to people is, you look around now and tell tell me where the people are that are neither indentured to government or dependent on government. And go back to 1776, and you won't find anybody indentured to government or dependent on government. They were all, you know, individually responsible. They weren't. Yeah, actually, they did, they largely after the revolution, the government was indentured upon them because they had uh, basically stolen so much uh, uh, property from the, the people just to, to fund the war. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So you know that there you go, your individualism and your self-reliance. But I really think it's rooted in the concept that people think. The government's supposed to protect us. Yeah, and, yeah. Thank you. And, and and you know, back to this, right? It's 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 about uh, preserving this so that you have the opportunity to go in there and set your own rules, you know, and, and say, uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna put a fence around my pool so that kids don't fall in it because that's my responsibility, and you know, that that sort of thing. Um, it, you know, not that the government comes in and says you must put a fence around your pool and yada, and, and people just go, yes, sir, you know, and and that's that's a a very robotic, um, you know, uh, knee-jerk existence. And it's that fault. I think it's, I think is antithetical to uh, the whole concept of individualism, and um, uh, and I find it personally extremely distasteful. Um, but I, I'm amazed at times at how many people are just more than content. I mean, are vehemently uh, opposed to to me uh, because they are just content to be marching in lockstep to well you know i i agree with most laws and and you know it doesn't i don't understand why you have a, a problem with the you know sp, you know speed limits and you know i mean you know michael where how are you being oppressed i mean you know what what's the you know this is what my uh some of my relatives were saying to me recently and i said you know you, you don't understand just because you can still see through the window doesn't mean they haven't been painting it black you know all the you know around the Around the periphery, okay. Um, it's it's just going to get narrower, and you might not like what they're doing tomorrow, um, <laughs> because it might affect you. Well, yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, the fact that you pay your taxes and you're happy to do it, and, and everything's you know pretty much hunky dory, you know, by and large for you, that's cool. But it's not for me. I don't, I don't want to work uh, for four months, five months out of the year as a slave uh, to give up my wages to pay for midnight basketball and wars overseas and all this other nonsense. Or forget uh, the negative stuff. People tell me about you know your wages going to the this all this negative stuff. I don't care if it went to good stuff. It's it's my problem. Exactly. Thank you. And uh, yeah. what people another thing I'm I'm educating people too is the concept of tyranny. Now, people think tyranny is all this negative and bad results, terrible things, but tyranny can even have uh, good results. 
Oh boy, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, a, a, a broken clock is right twice a day. Where are you going oh, with this, Mike? No, no, no. Let's say, <laughs> let's let's say, uh, Jefferson talked about a tyranny upon the mind of man. Okay. He's, he, and he's talking about you know. There you go. You know about this. This is the critical thinking. But this is mind control, propaganda, brainwashing, all of that. A tyranny upon the mind of man. So let's say I. Um, I see um, you, you tell me you really like this this girl. She's over there and whatnot. And uh, I go over there and tell the girl 10 million good things about you. And I convince you they're all lies. <laughs> You're a good wingman, though. And, and she hooks up with you. And yeah. you get married and have, live happily ever after. That's still a tyranny upon the mind of that girl. Okay. Oh, well, uh, okay. Wait. Tyranny upon the mind. You're 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 pre uh, you're precluding the possibility of an uh, open source. Uh, you know, access to information. I mean, this, this is an open marketplace, and she's quickly going to find out that you're lying because I'm not. You know, <laughs> I don't even know what you told her. Uh, but you know, she's. she's but if she knew it from the get go, she wouldn't. She might. Uh, she might lose the tyranny. She might bust through it, but it's already sent her down a path. You okay, so, so tyranny of the mind, meaning in in terms of like the, this paradigm setting, right? Like because because you imposed a, a certain vision and and concept of Michael, all right, of me, uh, that has that occupies her mind space for her, and so in that way, it's it's oppressive. I could I could see that. Yeah, because it took over the her self determinism and gave her false data, and when you're operating on false information, that's somebody controlling your mind. Sure. And Jefferson said that was the worst kind of tyranny, is the tyranny upon the mind of man. And Absolutely. so that's what we're living in now. And that's why, like you talked about it, definitions are so critical. And um, I think if people realize that tyranny can have good results or bad results, but tyranny is bad, in general, it's just plain bad because you're taking away someone's free will, self determinism. Yes, and it's, it, thank you. That's that's a very that's a very valid point and a very strong point. I, I think because uh, you're doing it in such a way that it's invisible. I mean, that's what that's why propaganda is so insidious. I mean, I, I'm amazed that they even called it propaganda in the in World War II. You know, they actually called it the Minister of Propaganda and what have you. Nowadays, they they refuse to call it propaganda. They just call it media. <laughs> you know, uh, and. Uh, you know, I, last night actually, I was watching YouTube videos of these clowns uh, at, at CNN. Uh, on top of the CNN building in Atlanta, Georgia, um, pretending that they're in Saudi Arabia and putting on their helmets and gas masks as Scud missiles are supposed to be flying overhead, you know, and all, all these little green screen outtakes where Anderson Cooper is losing his nose, you know, and, uh, and it's uh, it's it's pretty scary actually when you consider just how insidious and and how uh, uh, in doc, I mean, just. Uh, it, it's it's like it's like built into the system. It's it's endemic in in uh, some of these major news organizations to just categorically lie. I saw an MSN NBC uh, 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 report in which they had a, a, a guy showed up at an Obama rally uh, uh, wearing a, a an AK forty or a, a, an AR fifteen, uh, and they showed him uh, shot from the back uh, with the uh, just his suit and you know the a, a cl real close up. Well, uh, then they, they use that as a talking point to discuss the possibility of uh, racist overtones and how, you know, maybe America's not ready for a black president. Well, then they show the outtakes. The guy's black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, and, and, you know, it's just spin, spin, spin. So it's really insidious. And I think that, you know, uh, you, know uh, uh, you know, Romney had some, some pretty good quotes about this at the uh, uh, Alfred Smith Award. Uh, you know, he said, hey, what, what else do we have, you know? Thank God for a free press. <laughs> he says, you know, my job is to is to outline a, a positive uh, vision for America in the future, and uh, their job is to make sure no one hears about it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, but you know, Jefferson, when he was referring to this tyranny upon the mind, uh, could even imagine how big that's grown to the point where we are today, and how the, how big the matrix is. I mean, Jefferson was talking about a matrix. Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, you're absolutely right. The, the Leviathan of government itself has grown uh, in lockstep with the Leviathan of the media, and that's what many people are unaware of. I mean, as the conglomeration uh, and uh, continues to take place, and and you become uh, these news, news organizations become more and more centralized. Uh, you know, the, this top-down uh, command and control communist uh, uh, tyranny. Uh, is is dominating uh, what gets considered news, um, 
and so it's it's really it's really scary. I, I think I think that the 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 one uh, the one uh, buffer that we have against that is is the internet. And I just remember you know when when the internet was first taking off in the '90s and what have you, um, just being so grateful that to, to finally get different music, you know, that that wasn't just blessed by you know uh, people paying DJs to pay, play the song. Or, uh, but different news uh, organizations like uh, uh, you know the Drudge Report and and just all these different uh, people coming out with alternative sources of information and and I think that um, that what was the first uh, that first uh, effort that the government had to censor the internet a few years ago what was it the uh, FISA and whatever what was it called there were there yeah. two bills right and and it went down in flames right because Google and and everyone on you know on the net had said hey. They, you know, they, they, they said, you know, wave the big flag. Don't, you know, vote for this. Make sure you shoot it down. And sure enough, the voters came out in droves and just crushed them. Uh, but then the government got smart and they went in backdoor and said to Google and all the other big players, hey, uh, we're going to impose all these, you know, sanctions on you and you're going to have to, you know, go through this red tape if you don't agree with censoring the internet in this way. And they said, oh, okay. So now they're completely quiet. And then like this new, you know, uh, internet bill whatever it is is going to is probably going to pass and we're going to have regulators now crawling through the internet and you know keeping your speech uh quelled so just time to just disobey i think that's a good place to stop and we'll do this again i think this went over well and uh we'll see. i'd like to if i could i'd like to kind of just raise one question uh you know if i could just leave with a, a, a question um not, not so much a question so much a comment i suppose um you know uh to to uh I don't want to necessarily redefine uh, anarchist uh, or or what I am as an, as an anarchist, but I think that what I'm really in favor of, if there were a word for it, is just uh, greater choices. I, I'd like to see more diversity in terms of the the number of options for uh, systems of governance to be tried and and uh, and uh, for people to shop. I'd like to I'd like you know Jefferson's ideal was uh, the different states had a loose confederation. And that each state uh, had its own set of rules, and you could vote with your feet. So if you didn't like the way things were going here, you could go to the next state, and uh, things would be would be different. And I think that that model um, has uh, a lot of energy behind it. The the, the uh, seasteading institute uh, was a, an interesting place to for that to go, uh, where people could live at sea, and if they didn't like the way things were organized, they could literally say, "Hey, let me out of this flotilla and get towed over to another area." Where they would have a different system of governance, and and that that flexibility and that uh, dynamism, uh, that dynamic, I think is is really exciting, and I'd like to see more of that happening, um, and I think that we will actually. I think that in the future we're going to see more people who are going to be demanding to have uh, a, a more choices for, uh, or you know, societal organizational systems and and systems of governance. So I just wanted to kind of leave with that. That sounds like that'd make a good uh, uh, YouTube interview too. So let's let's think about doing that and and going over the different possibilities of different systems of government um, that uh, are more on. Obviously, when we get to self-governing, that's as close as to anarchy as you can get. People govern themselves, govern themselves, and so there's a there's a, a, a what do you call it a fulcrum or a spectrum uh, that we can go from. You know, total government to, to no government, and as close to, to zero is actually where I want it to be. I only want it to be, a, I want it to be a place where if Mike and I have a, a dispute, we absolutely cannot settle. I don't want us killing each other over it. That we right. are forced to go to, to a, a court and settle it if we won't settle it on our own. Sure. But exactly. we have every opportunity to settle it on our own first. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Good. Cool. Cool.